The international media are lying, as usual, about the reasons for the heavy collective protests in France. So I'll read it for you. Here it says, Media Liars. And this is actual happening now in France. This is a picture taken like today or a couple of days back. And here it says, Not about pension reform. Here you see the French police. And here's the people, you know, just burning the whole thing down. The lying international media say that the protests are about the Frenchies not wanting their retirement age to rise from 62 years to 64 years, thus showing the Frenchies as lazy in order to ridicule the movement and give credit to the authorities for whom the media work in the first place. No, it is not about that at all. Here it says, I'll read it for you, the law, Article 49.3 making Macron literally a king. And again, a picture, an actual picture of today or yesterday or two days ago, maybe. And the protests are about the law 49.3, which allows the French president to take political decisions and create new laws without a parliamentary vote in the Senate, thus giving the French president the feudal authorities of a medieval king, which has totally destroyed the republic and horizontal rule, for which in 1789, short just 89, it needed a very bloody French Revolution to get rid of the old feudal vertical rule by kings and queens. So here it says, feudal system is back officially. And this picture here is not from a Hollywood movie or something like The Exterminator, no. It was taken in Paris yesterday. Can you believe it? And neither is this from a Hollywood movie like The Godfather or something. No, this is actually happening now in France and the people are just so fed up. Now, today, 2023, the whole French Revolution has been for nothing and obsolete. And this has upset the entire French population very, very much, because they are very proud of their French Revolution, their guillotine to cut off some ears left and right, and their French fighting spirit against any type of oppression. So I explained the picture here for you. Here it says Republic versus Monarchy. So this this guy here, he's in the monarchy now. The Republic, the chairs is empty. It's gone. And the Republic, it, uh, it came in the revolution of 1789, which the French just call 89. And now we've got the law 49.3, short 49. So 49 killed 89. And the, the Republic, I can already say was, was a horizontal rule. Because there are many people democratically in Parliament, they are discussing and they're doing a vote in the Senate 
and the majority wins. So this is called horizontal because all these people together, they sit horizontally and they, they, they are all equally important. Whereas in a monarchy, I mean, I'm not talking about King Charles because this is a constitutional monarchy. King Charles is not a real monarch. You know, he has to abide by the by the horizontal rule of the the order of the garter. But a real feudal monarchy, it is a vertical rule, as it is today with Pharaoh Macronos II and his 49er law. You know, and I told you, you got this red pin, meaning he's of the red house of Pharaoh, and he's been showing it all the time. And now we're here, bang, this is it. The horizontal rule versus the vertical rule, or 89 versus 49. Well, the 49ers, they've got, they won now. And France is officially a dictatorship, a feudal dictatorship, a despotic, and um, the king is back. I have been warning you all for the last 12 years here on the internet that I see the feudal system of the nobility coming back and now it is done. In France democracy is officially dead and replaced by a despotic system in which only one man like an emperor or a pharaoh can solely take all the decisions for an entire nation and an entire people which is called a vertical rule straight down to the last person in the empire without any intermediary of any parliament and without any democratically made decisions this system is also called the beast system in a republic though there is a horizontal rule in which many politicians at the very same level can take the political decisions by means of voting also called democracy which is horizontal okay both systems both vertical and horizontal belong to the same pharaonic nobility also called the pharistocracy with these red pins here for the old world order for the red house of pharaoh this is why the bilderberg group was set up by a German Nazi prince in order to destroy the Republic and bring a royal, total control, feudal aristocratic system back, as in Pharaoh's times, the beast system. So, this is the sole reason the main reason for the Bilderberg group which was founded in the 50s and now they made it they destroyed the Republic in order to get the feudal system back and now in France it has happened and the people are raging because they don't want to live under a king anymore and especially not under pharaoh macronos ii so the chaos in france and the people raging is not really about the pension reform 
but it is about how Pharaoh Macronos II, all by himself, in a despotic way, as an evil emperor, just made the new pension reform law without any democratic parliamentary tools decided by hundreds of people inside the Republic. He decided all by himself through that new law of Article 49.3, making him the dictator of France, Pharaoh Macronos II. And I fear other countries will follow, because you have to remember this, that all new political systems have come out of France. The vertical rule of the feudal system of kings and castles started in France. And that is why French became the international language of the nobility. And then the horizontal rule system of the Republic made by the Knights Templars and their Freemasons also came from France. And now a vertical rule feudal system inside the horizontal democratic republic also comes out of France, with Macron becoming the king inside the republic. It's getting real weird and chaotic now. A vertical rule inside the horizontal rule system. You just couldn't make it up, can you now? We're in the transition time now, before the beast system, and therefore it needs chaos in order to create order afterwards, the order of the next system coming up. The Republic is dead, and for the transition time, it needs ordo ab cao, order out of chaos. So here you can read about Article 49 of the French Constitution from Wikipedia. I'll read it for you. Article, well, a part. <laughs> article 49 of the French Constitution is an article of the French Constitution, the fundamental law of the Fifth French Republic. So we're in the Fifth Republic now. I think it's from 1958 or something. It sets out the political responsibility of the government, the executive branch, towards the parliament legislative branch. It is part of Title five on relations between the parliament and the government articles 34 through 51 it structures the political responsibility of the current administration of the executive branch towards the french legislative branch this section of the french constitution outlines how the legislative system try tries to maintain the stability of the executive branch by providing the branch with alternatives outside the parliament. It was included in the constitution so as to counter the faults of the Fourth Republic, such as successive rapid government takeovers, by providing the government with the ability to pass bills without the approbation of the parliament possible through subsection 3 of article 49. So this is what the 49ers, what it's all about, this here. I repeat it by providing the government with the ability to pass bills 
without the approbation of the Parliament, possible through subsection 49.3. So meaning the, the French president has become a king and it doesn't need any horizontal uh, Republican part of the whole deal anymore. He can just decide everything himself, just like a feudal king. And the article, which comprises four paragraphs, was designed to prevent crises. Well, it's, it's more the opposite, like, like those that occurred under the Fourth Republic. It's best known provision, subsection 3, article 49.3, allows the government to force passage of a bill without a vote unless the parliament votes a vote de censure motion of no confidence well they did it but it didn't help such a vote has little chance of passing oh there you go since it may also entail the dissolution of the legislature pending new elections article 49 subsection 3 provides for well etc etc so the French king, he used the um, article 49.3 in order to pass the bill concerning the, um, the, retirement, um, the retirement thing, like uh, passing the retirement age from 64, uh, 62 to 64. And this is the part that completely set in rage the entire French population. And uh, because they have made it, um, they've made the French people to understand it. And this was, of course, the purpose. So everybody understands this because if the media wouldn't have shown it, nobody would have understood it, you know. So this is exactly what they want in order to create the chaos. You know, this is what they want. And this is going to create uh, inflation, a uh, economic uh, fall, and um, th they're going to replace the money by um, electronic money and chips. And this is what they want, you see. So you always have to think like uh, 10 moves ahead and a couple of moves further than what you see with your eyes, right? So these are the 49ers, yeah? That's, it is all about the 49ers. And yes, in fact, there is a lot of resemblance to the US 49ers and American football. On the field where the players are, there's a tough battle going on in which the referees have no more control over the game and the 49ers seem to be winning. And on the main stand in French Parliament, there's a lot of shouting with the various shields being displayed by the supporters of the game and the adversaries of the game. It's like American football with the 49ers being on the winning hand. So in France now, the Republic is dead. It's dead while having had 49.3 degrees Celsius fever, fever because of the organized attacks by the 49ers of the feudal aristocracy and Pharaoh Macronos II. So here it says the Republic is dead, which you can see here. Probably says the Republic here on his feet. And there's a fever of 49.3 degrees Celsius. Also, France's Prime Minister, Elizabeth Bourne, played an important role for the 49ers. And it's like she is the French branch of Jason Bourne. 
who assassinates the enemies of the Republic, while Elizabeth, born the Prime Minister, killed the entire Republic with it. So here it says, Prime Minister Bourne assassinates the entire Republic. That's her most hated person after Macron in France at the moment. And well, most of you know this guy here, Jason Bourne, Jabo, you know, uh, J-A-B-O, like James Bond, because of Yachin and Boas. It's the same, you know. And he continues, or he did, where James Bond sort of stopped right, in the series. Jabo. I call them Jabos. Yeah. And here it says the Born family. So here it's Born without a U, and this is Born with a U. And Jason Born assassinates the adversaries, the enemies of the Republic. And she kills the entire Republic with it. That's the Bourne family. And to terminate within the realm of the vertical and the horizontal, Stefan Eimer was the owner and CEO of France's biggest chain of laboratories called Biogroup, who had dared to criticize the all powerful Swiss Roche pharmaceutical company that the infamous PCR machines didn't work properly. A few days later in Paris, he was pushed out of a window from a high building on June 22nd, 2022, doing first the vertical and finishing with a horizontal. A long vertical drop, then kiss the concrete and maintain in a horizontal position. And June 22nd is part of the frame window of the summer solstice rituals the day before. So I read it for you here. Here you can see good looking, still young man. He was only 52 years old. Stefan Eimer, the CEO of Bio Group, June 22nd, uh, 2022. It probably was in the night, you know, like in the morning of June 22, which is definitely the realm of June 21st. You know, it's not even daybreak at June 22nd, you see. They got the whole night to do these sort of things, which is still in the realm of the summer solstice uh, rituals. And I wonder what uh, Pharaoh Macronos II was doing at this very moment. Oh boy, I do wonder. So here it says the vertical first and then horizontal. This movement here, it's called a defenestration from the French word fenêtre, which is a window. And of course, they said it's a suicide in the media, the authorities. I mean, look at him. He looks good, man. He was a multi, multi millionaire, very rich, very successful, good looking man. And, you know, why, why would he kill himself? You know, he got suicided. So first he did the vertical and then the horizontal. Here from left to right and in the French government there are no less than five XLBS pink list killers as ministers ruling over the people and deciding what's best for the people and their names from left to right are Gabriel Attal minister of public action and accounts. Next, Olivier Dussopt, Minister of Labour, Employment and Integration. Next, Clément Bourne, Minister for European Affairs. Next, 
Sara Al Hayri, Minister of Youth Affairs, like Jutta Rüdiger, who was at the head of the BDM Bund Deutscher Mädels in Nazi Germany, and also being a XLBS pink list killer, seeking a top position to be near to the most vulnerable in society, our children. So here it says BDM, I already told you about this, Bund Deutsche Mädel, the organization of German girlies. And this is her, her personal friend of Adolf Hitler, Himmler, Baldur von Schirach, another pink list killer. Baldur von Schirach, he was the head of the Hitler Youth. And the Bund Deutscher Mädel, that was the feminine equivalent of, of the Hitler Youth. And at the head of this, it was the biggest youth organization at the time in the world with four and a half million members. And at the top, at the head of it, was this one here, Extre extremely dangerous. Jutta Rüdiger, ex-LBS pink list killer. Not a day in prison, she did after the war. She could continue a career next to the kiddies again and write a lot of books. And I mean, look for yourself. Look at these faces, how innocent, you know? Okay. They became guilty with the things they, they, they got put in their minds by this one here and the rest of them. But these faces are like blank, you know, there's still nothing in it. They're still innocent. They are, these are children, you know, and they didn't have any chance. I mean, it was compulsory anyway to go in these military organizations, you know, otherwise you'd, you'd end up in a concentration camp with, you, with your whole family. No, seriously, that happened. So, I mean, look, look at her face. She looks so innocent. And this one here, too. The, the, the German people, especially the children, they could not escape this. They had no chance. I mean, they were children. I mean, mentally and psychologically, they could not escape this evil here. I mean, look at her face. You know, she knows exactly what, is do what she's doing. And now in France, it's the same thing, another pink list killer, top position, a minister of youth affairs. So that's what I'm telling you all the time. You must know history, otherwise you won't understand a thing of the actual political situation because they all the time, they do the same things. You know, history is repeating itself all the time because it's the same people, the same lineage, the same pharaohs who are at the top, you know. So the Germans, like here, you know, they lost the war. But the Nazis, this one here, they won the war. I already showed you this one time, but this is a new video. And maybe people haven't seen the other video, so I must show this again. Because I only do facts, facts, and again, facts. No no rumors. So here she is, Jutta Rüdiger. And she almost looks like a bloke. Look at her. Like the Statue of Liberty, like a bloke. You know. Or the Statue of No Liberty. <laughs> so she was the, uh, the BDM leader, here it says. And um, okay, I'll skip all this. You can read it yourself, yeah. There we go. Arrest and later life. So Rüdiger was arrested by American forces in 1945 and spent two and a half years in detention, which I believe she didn't even spend it because uh, uh, two and a half years in prison because they all protect each other. Uh, <coughs> anyway, two and a half years is not very long for what she did. Four and a half thousand, a million girlies she twisted their heads into uh, anti-J-war charism, 
and uh, Nazism and, and hatred and murder. And she did only two and a half years in detention. Yeah, it gets worse. Rudiger was not charged with any specific offense and was never brought to trial. Upon her release, she resumed her career as a pediatric psychologist in Dusseldorf. Well, pediatric, that means work with kiddies. Again, she just goes on, you know. How is this possible? I mean, to me, this one is worse and far more dangerous even than a guy who was with the um, with the Einsatzgruppen, you know, and, and murdering a lot of people, which was very evil, you know. But this one is worse, I tell you. And these ones don't do a day in prison. So according to a recent historian, she remained an unreconstructed Nazi, oh, of course. In a 2000 interview, she said in 2000, she was still there. She said, National Socialism is not repeatable. Well, well, look around, it is. One can take over only the values which we espoused. Hmm. Comradeship, readiness to support one another, bravery, self-discipline, and not least, honor and loyalty. Yeah, okay, yeah, sure, and the Germans believed all this, eh? Apart from this, each young person must, must find their way alone. Okay, now here it comes. From 1940 to 1991, that's 51 years, people, that's half a century. She lived with her co-operator, Heidi Boomer, another woman. And she died in 2001 at Bad Reichenhall in Bavaria. So it was a pink list killer, just as we see it today. Again, this is history, it repeats itself all the time. This, this French minister, also a, a ex, ex-LBS pink list killer, you know, and near to the, the, the most vulnerable in, in society, our children. Just like this here, all the time. I mean, they, they are going for this, you know. Okay, and the next one of the French XLBS pink list killer ministers in um, Macronos, his cabinet. Here he is. And then there is Frank Riester, Minister Delegate for Parliamentary Relations. And look carefully on his face. Just watch his face very carefully. Frank Riester, the ex-LBS French minister, who looks like Silas, the masochist priest from the film Da Vinci Code. It says Silas the priest, Da Vinci Code. You remember him, how he was whipping himself? That's part of their game, isn't it? And here you see a comparison with the two of them. Here is Silas from the movie, whipping himself. And here is the French ex-LBS pink lister minister, Frank Riester, who's also probably most likely in the whipping game. You know, they not only look alike with the same eyes, the same facial expression, the same colored or dyed hair, and they're probably both also in the whipping game. Hello, little boy. Do you also want to become a minister later on when you've grown up? So here's the French minister again, and here it says Silas the priest. Five XLBS pink list killers in Pharaoh Macronos, his government, who he himself might also be an alleged pink list killer. And oh boy, what a mess they made out of it, with France at the brink of civil war which is, in fact, the ordo ab cao technique of order out of chaos to push through 
their apparent agenda a lot smoother after the chaos. A smooth rape of the people, you might say. So here are some proofs. Here the first one in line of these five pictures before. Gabriel Attal. And there, there are many websites and newspaper articles about this, what I'm going to tell you. You can verify it all for yourself. But I like to show it here on Wikipedia because I don't need any cookies here. So here it says, Gabriel Attal is a French politician of La République en Marche. That's the party of, uh, of Macronos who has been serving as Minister of Public Action and Accounts in the government of Prime Minister Elisabeth Bourne. Remember what I showed you, the Jason Bourne? She was behind that law, the, the 49er law, since uh, 2022. He was the government spokesman, spokesperson under President Emmanuel Macron, so Pharaoh Macronos from 2020 to 2022. Okay, now, so I have to show you all this so you won't think I'm like uh, talking out of my... Uh, no, I don't think I'm gonna say that because um, that would be a bit too dangerous in the vicinity of these sort of characters here. They might have another idea when I say that, right? So, so it says, a personal life. I'm not going to pronounce these words here. I, you know, I'm not allowed, first of all, because of the censorship. And uh, secondly, I don't want to. So Atal is openly a XLBS pink list killer and lives in civil union with Stéphane Sejourné, who's also a politician. Can you believe it? A member of the European Parliament for La République en Marche. Well, we knew that one. He was uh -huh, on Twitter by his former classmate Juan Branco. Probably also one. So let's... Yeah, might be. Also in politics. We're all in politics. For the agenda, you see. So there it is. Come on, let's have a look. So, Stéphane Sejourné is a French lawyer and politician who was elected as member of the European Parliament. He has led Renew Europe, a liberal pro-European parliamentary group. Sejourné was an advisor to Emmanuel Macron during his ministerial tenure and advised him during his 2017 presidential campaign. In 2022, he became general secretary of uh, Renaissance. Renaissance. Well, there's probably a lot more. Well, here you can see the uh, Sejournés in civil union with fellow Minister of Public Accounts, uh, Gabriel uh, Attal, whom I just showed, showed to you. So it's all in the family, right? We're, we're being ruled by these sort of families, yeah? It's a bloodline almost, you might say. It probably is as well. And they are like um, dictating us what to think and what to say, what to look at, and like a reset of the human race according to the agenda. So the next one in line. You know, it's like a lineup in front of the FBI or something, what I've shown you before. The next one in line, Olivier Dussopt, and, uh, is a French politician who has served as Minister of Labour, Employment and Integration. I, I'm not sure what they're integrating here, but never mind. In the government of Prime Minister Elisabeth Bourne. There she is again, Jason Bourne. She's probably the most hated woman in France at the moment. He previously served as Minister of Public Action and Accounts in the governments of successive Prime Minister Edouard Philippe and Jean Castex. 
Dussop was a member of the National Assembly for Ardesh, well, etc. etc. Now let's have a look what he's doing in his spare time, eh? There you go. Private life. In March 2023, Dussopt came out of the closet as a XLBS pink list killer in an interview with French magazine Tattoo. Tattoo, it means stubborn. Well, what kind of stubbornness they mean here? You may guess just one time, yeah. Okay, the next one in line, the one in the middle of that, uh, the lineup of five of them, Clément, Clément Bonne. And I remind you now, uh, many years ago, I filmed in the town of Bonne, which is written like this, where there is a, a, um, a Templar's Chapel. Uh, I'm not sure if it's still somewhere on my channels as they moved away a lot of my videos, hundreds of them actually, where the um, the founder or one of the founders of the, or, or actually the last grandmaster, uh, Jacques de Molay, uh, or de Molay as Americans say it, Jacques de Molay, which is an aristocratic name with the de part in it where he was um, being initiated into the Knights Templars organization in the town of Bonn, just like this. So Clément Bonn, there are many popes who are being called Clément, eh? um, um, is a French public servant. I'm not sure if he serves the public, but okay. And politician who has been serving as the Secretary of State so that's American for a minister. People, the Americans say Secretary of State. We say minister. For European affairs in the government of Prime Minister Jean Castex and Elizabeth Bourne. Again, Jason Bourne. And she killed the Republic recently, just a few weeks ago. So let's have a look. So that was his profession. Let's have a look what he's doing in his spare time. Um, okay, here we are, personal life. In December 2020, Bone came out of the closet as XLBS pink list killer in an interview with the French XLBS lifestyle magazine Tattoo again. Bone said he wanted to show that being uh, a pink list killer was not an ob obstacle uh, to becoming a government minister, etc., uh, etc. Et so you read it yourself. Uh, Bone is a fencing enthusiast. Wow, well, just like uh, Jacques de Molay, also in Bone. Yeah bone like a boner maybe maybe that's where the word boner comes from as the knights templars they were sodomites and satanists as our good king philip the fair and his very powerful prosecutor guillaume de nogaré as they said so so i better stop here Okay, the next one in line, that is Sarah El, El Hairi. That means Sarah the hairy one. Here it says hairy. And actually, and a Muslim, it sounds very Muslim, but um, it cannot be. Uh, she must be a, um, a jaywalker. But of the jaywalker nobility, of course. And um, because a Muslim, the equivalent of Sarah in the Muslim world is Sarai, with an I instead of an H. And in fact, Sarah is a, um, a Pharaonic name. Sar, as I already explained to you, it means the, uh, the king or Pharaoh, like in a sarcophagus. 
a sarcophag, which is a box to put the king in when he's dead. That's why there is Caesar and the Tsar and Son Altesse Royale and Nebuchadnezzar, etc., etc., and Sarkozy. And Ah, it means big or pregnant. So it means king or queen in this case, yeah, king, pregnant. And Sarah, uh, they call her actually the um, uh, the, um, the the birth mother of the Jaywalkers, or the Queen Mother of the Jaywalkers. And it says in the word in the word the Queen Mother. So it says Queen Birth. I mean, she gave birth, or a queen or king pregnant. So that means she gave birth to the whole bloodline. And this bloodline is, of course, the nobility of the Jaywalkers, because the name is very pharaonic. In the Demotic language, it is 100% uh, Demotic. So, Sarah the Hairy One. And here it says, in April 2023, she, uh, she, um, she came out of the closet and... Um, she told everybody in an interview that she is a uh, XLBS pink lace killer. And uh, the hairy one is a French politician of the democratic movement. What was that? Oh, okay, what was that? Yeah, okay, liberty, egalité, oh, we know that, yeah. Um, of the democratic movement, modem who has been serving as state secretary, a minister, for youth, as I told you before, just like Jutta Rudiger, yes, of national, the Ministry of, uh, at the Ministry of National Education in the governments of Prime Ministers, Jean Castex and Elisabeth Born, Jason Bourne's sister again. She was previously, previously a member of the French National Assembly, well, et cetera, et cetera. And she's born to a Franco-Moroccan parent. So her father is a Moroccan, a hairy Moroccan. And the mother is French. You can see that in her face, maybe, or maybe not. And, um, okay. Thank God, we're only one left, eh? Well, you can read the rest yourself. So... Again, a um, state secretary is American, and we call them ministers. Okay, there we got Silas again, the whipping master from the Da Vinci Code, and his real name is Frank Riesta. is a French politician who has been serving as minister delegate for parliamentary relations in the government of Prime Minister Elisabeth Bourne. There she is again the sister of Jason Bourne, eh? since July 2022. He previously served as Minister Delegate for Foreign Trade and Economic Attractiveness. Well, what's this? A sort of a mate call with his economic attractiveness, isn't it? In the governments of Prime Ministers Jean Castex and Elisabeth Bourne, between 2020 and 2022, a former member of the Republicans, if he founded and currently leads the center right Agir party. Agir, it means act. Wow. Act what? <laughs> so, I mean, it means they're all actors, right? Eh? Act what? That's what they are, actors. They even say it in their, the, the names of the political parties. So, personal life, uh, Riesta. So uh, Silas Riesta came out. Uh, he uh, he came out out of the closet, yeah, and told everyone in 2011 already uh, that he is an XLBS Pinkless killer. And what is this? The first French minister president to do so. Ah, he was even the prime minister, who the, the first one in French history who did so. Wow, isn't it charming, eh? Isn't it charming? The whipper. 
So once more, as we're getting to America here, uh, so in Europe, a minister is what Americans call a secretary of state. Like the US Secretary of Transportation, whom you can see here, who's also a XLBS pink list killer by the name of Pete's butt um, gig. Butt kick. Okay. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce all these foreign names, but I guess we all got the first part of his name. And maybe some of you also the second part. Butt kick. <laughs> you just couldn't make it up, really. So there he is. I wonder what the button says. These are important things. They always got this button to transmit some sort of a message. So maybe it says, please don't butt kick me or I don't know. So, okay. So, oh yeah, here it says, um, um, Pete's butt kick is an American politician and former naval officer who is currently serving as the 90th United States Secretary of Transportation. So he's the Minister of Transportation. And of course, he's a member of the Democratic Party. Uh, he was the 32nd mayor of uh, South Bend from 2000, uh, which earned him the, the nickname Mayor Pete. Oh, what a nickname, right? Eh? I would call them as a nickname Mayor Buttkick. Uh, I'll tell you that. I mean, that's what it says, doesn't it? I can't pronounce all these four names. So let's have a look. Professional career, military service. He probably went killing Muslims, you know, because. The Muslims, they're not too fancy of XLBS pink list killers, forbidden in their religion. And increased national profile. The mayor, oh man, he just wants to be the president and uh, social issues. Climate change, foreign policy, well, he did it all, eh? Vote Vets organization. Okay, there we are, personal life. Well, first of all, it says butt kick is a Christian. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, if that's supposed to be allowed. So, okay, I start here. And um, that's his cathedral. Here you can see butt kick with the other one. So butt kick came out as a XLBS pink list killer in June 2015 in the South Bend Tribune. Bend what? What are they bending to the south? Like uh, in boxing, you got a, a south a south pole, don't you know? Eh? One is a left hand hitter, and the bend the bend it's like a gender bender maybe. Uh, becoming Indiana's first openly XLBS elected executive, he was the first elected official and the highest elected official in Indiana to come out of the closet. But kick announced his engagement to. Cheston Glesman, there he is. Another. So now, now they both, they're both butt kicks now. They both have the now it's Cheston butt kick, as it says here. A junior high school teacher. Oh, again near the children. Uh, uh, well, okay, I don't. Know. Well, I mean, okay, let, just read it yourself. You know, I've got enough butt kick here. Uh, yeah, butt kick announced that he and his husband had become parents on August 17th, 2021. 
Buttcake announced that they had adopted two newborn fraternal twins. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I just seal my lips here, okay? Uh, I, I'm not going to say anything. Uh, because they'll have my video removed. I guess with a name like Buttkick, things can only go wrong from the beginning onwards, obviously. When he was a kid, he must have heard it so many times. Hey, butt kick! So when he grew up, he decided to go into the US Navy, where there are a lot of butts to kick. So he actually became a naval officer, actively participating in the military hierarchy game of shall I dominate you or are you gonna dominate me? Which apparently led butt kick to Ah, oh, that was the whistle. Sorry, folks. That was the censorship machine. Well, let's say that butt kick here overdid it and sort of extended the domination game. Shall I dominate you or are you gonna dominate me? As sodomy is the very essence of hierarchy. Either you get fucked by your superior or you fuck up the subordinate. And here it says, so he gets a butt kick here, the guy, and here it says sodomy is the essence of hierarchy. And it all comes out of the Knights Templars, all military organizations, the entire hierarchy. And um, as our king said, they are the Knights Templars, they are Satanists and Sodomites, and we must burn them alive. So that's why the whole hierarchy it all comes out of the Knights Templars. This is Octogon. That's why so many military badges, they are octagonal. Maybe most of them. In Luxembourg, there is the Prime Minister Xavier Bettel. Actually, Bettel is a German name. As they speak in Luxembourg, they mostly speak a German dialect. And Bettel, it means to beg. Bettel. And nowadays, um, Luxembourg actually is a duchy with a duke at the head. So it's uh, pure aristocracy. There's a lot of, uh, they're taking over a lot of banking uh, facilities from Switzerland or banking actions and a lot of uh, uh, tax evasion nowadays or since the big financial crash in 2008 Luxembourg um, has taken over the uh, the tax evasion a lot um, but now it's all like uh, the United Arab Emirates you know so Xavier Bettel is a Luxembourger lawyer and politician serving as Prime Minister of Luxembourg. And so let's have a look what he's doing in his spare time, shall we now? So there he is, the, the Prime Minister. Okay, there we are, personal life. So, Battle, who's openly an uh, XLBS pink list killer, has stated that increasingly in Luxembourg, people do not consider the fact of whether someone is XLBS or not. Battle is Luxembourg's first openly XLBS prime minister. Worldwide, he's the third openly XLBS head of government following Iceland's prime minister, Johanna Sigurdadottir. Sigurd Oh, another one. And Belgium Prime Minister Elio Di Rupo. Oh, man. 
As of 2020, he is one of the two openly ex-OBS world leaders in office, the other being Anna Brnabic, the Prime Minister of Serbia. Okay, well, let's have a look. So there he is with, um, I don't know. So the Prime Minister here, yeah, Johanna Sigurda Dodir. Let's have a look. So here it says, uh, the Prime Minister of Iceland, I guess um, Dottir, it sounds like daughter, doesn't it? And Sigurd is, is the name. Sigurd, actually, uh, that's the Nordic uh, mythology. He went to the south of France to Mont Ségur, where he slayed the dragon. It's in the, it's in the Pyrenees, in the very south of France. I went to the castle and I slept there. Mont Ségur. Ségur is the French word for Sigurd. And so she is the daughter of Sigurd who slayed the dragon. And I told you, as um, St. George, he's the, um, the saint protector of the Knights Templars, he slayed the dragon. And the, with the dragon, they mean us. We are the dragon, the fire, you know, the, like the Germanic tribes who ransacked Rome and the Celtic tribes, who actually did as well, but they didn't stay. They were not as... Um, as um, perfectionists as the Germanic tribes who really did it, you know. But um, so she's the daughter of, you could say, the man slayers, you know, the dragon slayers. Because we are hot, like hot blooders, you know, like a dragon, you know, with fire. As for them, they are cold blooders, you know, with this fork tongue sticking out, like, you know. So here, so she, uh, well, she divorced, and um, so okay, she um, after their divorce, she joined in a civil union with uh, Jonina Leo's daughter, so that uh, Leo is a, is a lion. That's the aristocracy, the daughter of the of the lions, the arist the daughter of the aristocracy. Well, I'm not going to show it all to you, eh? Just look it up yourself. Uh, when uh, XLBS marriage was legalized in Iceland, um, Joanna and Jonina uh, changed their civil union into a marriage, just becoming one of the first XLBS married couples in Iceland. Okay. And here we got um, the Prime Minister, Elio Di Rupo. There's a lot of rumors. And I think I heard even proofs that he's a, uh, a pedophile. There's a lot of room. Every time I went to Belgium, uh, the people told me about this. Everyone, even when I was just hitchhiking. So here, he was the prime minister of Belgium. And um, let's have a look what he's doing in his spare time. He's probably not saying everything. Ah, he's a Freemason, of course. And um, here, he, uh, Di Rupo came out of the closet and um, as a XLBS in 1996. Okay, well, you, you, you read the rest yourself. Uh, and here, uh, Anna Brnabic, Prime Minister. Oh, wow, that looks like a bloke, huh? Of Serbia. Did I pronounce it right, my... My Yugoslav friends, I have a lot of respect for the Yugoslavs because they're the only people in Europe that kicked out the Nazis all by themselves. They did it all alone. No other people did this. So, well, here, the, here it all is, uh, the uh, XLBS. And Anna Brnabic is one of the first prime ministers um, whose partner has given birth while in office. So when a partner has given birth and she, well, you know. And the first in the world in a uh, XLBS couple, some journalists and XLBS activists have concluded that Bernabic has failed to advocate for XLBS equality in Serbia. I guess the, uh, the Serbs are not really very much into this. Like in Eastern Europe, 
It's also one of the reasons we got the, uh, the Ukraine war. I told you all the reasons. It's the agenda, you know. Uh, remember the uh, picture of the former uh, butcher president of uh, Ukraine, together with uh, Sir Elton John, you know, doing all these secret symbols, you know. So, okay, so there we had it. There was the, um, the Prime Minister of uh, Luxembourg here. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're all sweating you know, on these pictures, the other ones too. Wow, what's that? Yeah. Look, they all got these pins here on, the, on, here on the left side where the heart is. All, you know, showing their um, allegiance somewhere, you know, in some sort of an order. And it's usually combined with red for the Bertasser Red House of Pharaoh, where they all come from. In Ireland, uh, the Prime Minister or wannabe Prime Minister, Leo Varadkar, doesn't sound really Irish though. Um, I don't know if he made it Prime Minister or if he wanted to be. Yes, he became the Prime Minister. So here it says, Leo Varadkar, he is Ireland's first and the world's fifth, oh, they're even counting it, eh? Openly a pink list killer head of government. It's, it's all over. So you can read it yourself. Minister of Transport, Tourism and Sport. I can't say very much because of the censorship and the even the authorities. You know, we're in a total dictatorship. They dictate what we do, what we think, what we say. And um, so I just try to steer around it, if you know what I mean. So here's the personal life, what well, I already told you. During an interview on RTE Radio on January 18, 2015, his 36th birthday. Oh, that's very important, eh? Varadkar spoke publicly for the first time about being XLBS. It's not something that defines me. I'm not a cetera, a doctor. It's just part of who I am. Yeah, sure. It doesn't define me, it's a part of my character, I suppose. Varadkar, a fine Irish name. A foreign Irish name, Roy. <laughs> was, was a prominent advocate of the, uh, the XLBS marriage referendum. His partner, Matthew Barrett, is a doctor at Mater Misericordiae University Hospital. Mater, it means the mother. Uh, Misericordiae, it means um, uh, like human comfort. You know. uh, I think it was. <laughs> so, so this is Varadkar. Uh, the Prime Minister of Ireland. Oh, you Irish. Maybe you stop fighting against each other like the, the Protestants and the Catholics. Might very well be you got another enemy, right? Uh, my, my Irish accent sort of comes better than the American accent, right? <laughs> Not bad for a South African. And there are many, many more. As in total shock, I just had to stop digging more into the dark hole of the actual global politics. And just listen well how I pronounce the word politics. And I pronounce it as polytricks, like a trick. 
So all these pink list killers I just mentioned before, they openly admitted themselves being XLBS pink list killers and came themselves out of the closet. And I guess there's not much more place in that huge closet of high up politicians who did not admit it, like the alleged XLBS pink list killer pharaoh Macronos II himself. So here you see a celestial a dark hole in, this, in the, the skies, in the universe, and here it says the dark hole of international politrix. It's very tricky, you see, it's politrix. And here it says, if you don't dominate us, we will dominate you. So if you punch like this here, I punched it in French in the uh, Google search machine, there's a whole a whole bunch of them here um, coming out of the closet, so to speak. You can see here's the guy from Ireland. Here's Luxembourg standing here together. Here too, Luxembourg. Here's Mr. Buttkick with the other one. And at a certain moment, uh, I just stopped. You know, here we got uh, Silas from the Da Vinci Code. Uh, Buttkick again here. And there are really many, many, many more. I just stopped digging into it. You know, you can do that yourself. Um, it's enough. Um, and again, I'm just documenting. Um, please don't attack me with the censorship. I didn't even express my own opinion about it. I'm only documenting. Um, because it needs to be documented. and. After all, isn't that, that what they want, you know, to be documented, to be in the media at the, at the first, at the front page? Um, I mean, I can put you here at the front page of my channel if you want, okay? So, and don't send the, um, the Nazi authorities towards me. I'm only documenting. I'm not even giving my personal opinion. A quick remark on the actual political status of Macronos, his pink list killer ministers. At one point or another, they were Macronos, his ministers, over the last six years since his reign as pharaoh of France. But as France's government cabinet is changing nearly every week, it's kind of hard to keep up those mentioned pink list killer political statuses within the cabinet. And here it says summer solstice, June 21st, 2018. This is a genuine picture. This is the, at the presidential palace at this date, and this really happened. And uh, Pharaoh Macronos, he was there. It's a real picture. Under the actual dictatorship, with its harsh political censorship and overall repression, I'm not allowed to give my personal opinion about this irrefutable global tendency. I can only document and let y'all make your own opinion about it. As in, on y soit qui mal y pense, the motto of the Order of the Garter by the Knights Templars, who in fact, created the whole system, included its XLBS pink list killers 
at the summit of command. And well, you know this, it says kill the patriarchy by the feminists and the pink list killers. And there is a relationship between censorship and Oniswa qui mal y pense. So I wrote here censorship and Oniswa qui mal y pense. So here it says again, Oni soit qui mal y pense and censorship. Oni soit qui mal y pense means shame on him who thinks evil of it. The very motto referring to this global censorship and the very motto as this global censorship's unwritten law. Shame on him who thinks evil of it. On y soit qui mal y pense. Our king of France saw it coming. Notre roi de France a anticipé et vu venir tout cela. Hélas. Hélas. Pour le week-end prochain, comme ce week-end. Voilà, vous savez tout. Il me reste à vous souhaiter une excellente semaine. À très bientôt, messieurs, dames. Yesterday, March 26, 2023, on the French National Weather Forecast, the French weatherman pulled out the middle finger to the entire nation and most of all, to the president and the entire politrix. I've never seen something alike in France, and it really shows how bad the situation is in France at the moment. As I've explained to you in my last video that the French president has given himself dictatorial powers meaning that the Republic is dead, for which Frenchy fought so hard through the French Revolution of 1789. Il me reste à vous souhaiter une excellente semaine. À très bientôt, messieurs, dames. For Frenchy, the French Revolution is as important as the Quran to a Muslim. And you just don't touch Frenchy's revolution if you want to stay out of troubles. Uh, pour la saison, uh, même si elles fraîchiront de nouveau uh, pour uh, le week-end prochain, comme ce week-end. Voilà, vous savez tout. Il me reste à vous souhaiter une excellente semaine. À très bientôt, messieurs, dames. Okay, Frenchy doesn't know that the French Revolution was triggered by the Knights Templars of the aristocracy and not by the French people. But nevertheless, in France, the French Revolution is as holy as 72 virgins to Osama bin Laden. And you just don't touch a virgin either, nor does one use the middle finger on her. Une excellente semaine. À très bientôt, messieurs, dames. Here you can see the French President Macron giving the international asshole hand sign, probably due to his alleged sexual orientation. And the French weatherman adds the middle finger to fit in showing how much the Frenchies are disgusted with their president. Une excellente semaine, à très bientôt, messieurs, dames.